Welcome to our lecture online. In this example, we're going to find the RMS voltage of a full wave rectified voltage source. Here's the equation for the voltage source as a function of time. It's 50 times sine of t. 50 represents, of course, the maximum voltage during the cycle. But since it's full wave rectified, the portion that would normally go below the axis here gets get folded over and so we have this as what we call the full wave rectified voltage. We have an 8 ohm resistor, we're trying to find the RMS voltage and the average power delivered to that resistor. Again the equation is the same, the RMS voltage is equal to the square root of the integral from 0 to the period of V squared dt over t. Of course V squared is going to be 50 squared which can come outside the radical after a while. Um, times the sine squared of t dt divided by the period and the period, well in this case the period is going to be pi because it repeats every pi so the period here is not 2 pi, the period here is pi and therefore the limits are from 0 to pi not from 0 to 2 pi. Okay, that means that VRMS is equal to, we're going to take the 50 out because it's the 50 squared times the square root of 1 over the period, in this case pi, times the integral from 0 to pi, and of course instead of writing the sine square of t, we're going to write it as 1 half times 1 minus the cosine of twice the angle times dt, like this. The 1 half can come outside the integral sign, so this becomes equal to 50 times the square root of 1 over 2 pi times the integral from 0 to pi of 1 minus the, that would be the cosine of 2t times dt, like this. All right, now we're ready to integrate. So VRMS is equal to 50 times the square root of 1 over 2 pi times. The integral of 1 dt is t, and the integral of minus the cosine of 2t is minus 1 over 2 times the sine of 2t evaluated from 0 to pi. Now again, realize that the sine of 2 pi is 0 and the sine of 0 is 0, so this goes to 0, and here when plugging the upper limit we get pi, plugging the lower limit we get 0, so this essentially becomes equal to 50 times the square root of pi over 2 pi, of course, the pi's cancel out, so this is equal to 50 times the square root of 1 over 2. Well, that's the square root of 2 over 2, so that means VRMS is equal to the square root of 2 over 2 times 50, which is equal to 0 0.707 times 50. Of course, if you want to get a more accurate value of that, so 50 times 0 0.707, that would get 35, 35, that makes sense. So 35.35 volts is the RMS voltage, the root mean square voltage of that circuit when we have a fully rectified voltage source. Now we need to calculate the average power. Power average is equal to I RMS squared times r, which also can be written as VRMS squared divided by r, when we make this substitution here, and so that means that the average power is equal to the RMS voltage, which would be the uh, square root of 2 over 2 squared times 50 squared divided by the resistance, which is 8, this would be equal to 1 half times 50 squared. So this is equal to 1 half times 2500 divided by 8, which is 2500 divided by 16, which gives me about 156.25 watts. All right. And so there, this is how you find the RMS voltage and the average power of a fully rectified wave function like that. And that's how it's done. To find the RMF voltage, or RMS voltage, I should say, for the Wolf... <laughs> 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 Let me try this again. All right.